Hey people, we have Michael Tintik and Gregor here and today we're going to be talking about something very special. Uh, we want to introduce you to a special project with, that we've been working on for a while. It's called Ionic View or how we call it internally, Vuonic. <laughs> That's a tongue breaker. breaker. <laughs> so, Ionic View uh, and Michael Tintiuk is the, the mastermind behind Ionic View. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Hey, great. Uh, trying not to melt in the summer heat right now. So the one thing that looks odd is Ionic View. Usually we have Ionic, we have View, we have, you know, just libraries. And now we have a merger. So what's going on here? Right. It's, it's kind of hard to think about it for the first time as uh, Ionic is just not your average bootstrap library, right? It's way more than just a UI library. And um, in case of Vue Ionic, what it does, it uh, brings the two together in a sense that it brings Vue into the Ionic ecosystem just as much as it brings Ionic into the Vue world. So it creates uh, components that you can reuse natively in Vue and then go further along and build your PWAs using Vue, etc. So it's uh, best of two worlds. I got it. But Ionic, since version four, Ionic are web components, right? Yeah. And the last I checked, Vue works perfectly well with web components. So, so are we reinventing the wheel or is this really necessary? Well, you know, it's uh, both yes and no. In terms of, uh, yeah, you can use web components in Vue uh, without any trouble, but you can only go as far as that will allow you. In terms of, you still have to hook in uh, to routing, transitions, and a lot of that is gonna either require a lot of boilerplate with transitions between routes, for example, and you will probably have to write your own router. So if you're down for that, Ping me and we'll talk. Otherwise, um, you can use the library and we do all the heavy lifting for you of integrating Ionic into Vue. Okay, okay, that sounds good. So Ionic Vue basically merges the two ecosystems together, right? So we can write beautiful mobile UI uh, presentations or uh, comp applications, UI components uh, using the Vue ecosystem, right? And what I heard is that router is probably one of the biggest challenges because routing is, uh, in, in Ionic, routing is used for navigation, for showing tabs, uh, maybe some other features. And this is what actually was required to be merged together, right? Yeah. Not as much as the routing itself. The thing with routing is if you get your first page load right, it will work with routing as well because it just loads a new component, right? The, the real problem, the real challenge was those awesome fluid platform specific transitions that Ionic has and getting that to work with Vue. And yeah, it took me some time to figure it out. But I mean, it's, it's amazing that I don't know if Vue devs had ever imagined that it will work that way. Probably some guy in the back of the room said, hey, let's, let's do this and allow some weird dude to implement it and it works. I mean, there are a couple of ways to introduce it, but it's, I mean, you won't probably find the implementation in your average uh, view application because there is no use for it. But for library and framework integration work, it's just perfect. I'm really happy that Vue has this. Cool, cool. So, so basically, just I guess you just import uh, Ionic Vue that does a lot of the bindings for you, and then then work with the components, right? And this is this is the one thing that I that I've been missing. So, as a disclaimer, you know, uh, along the side with Michael working on Ionic Vue, there's another team at Modus that's working on a sample application which is um, a kind of a full feature e-commerce app that uses Ionic View. And I, I worked with it a little bit and I actually tried to use web components and not Ionic View components. If you've been following our YouTube channel, uh, you would have noticed that uh, we have a lot of Vue 3 content. So the one thing that I really enjoy by Vue 3 is not only the composition API, but what composition API enables, which is a phenomenal type safety with TypeScript, right? 
Uh, and then TypeScript also brings some of the awesome ID fe uh, features like IntelliSense. And how can you write a component and not have it out of complete? <laughs> that's like, to me, that's super ridiculously important. So I was trying to write web components and I tried to be a kind of a really bad team member here and not do Ionic View. And I was like, oh, I want to see how to do this without Ionic View, just with web components. I, uh, that was miserable. And after I tried Ionic View, I could kind of converted all that. I was like, oh, I'm back home. Yeah. Welcome back. That's that's one of the um, the biggest things with uh, the current with the new version, and one of the biggest issues with the current one is that now everything is a native component, uh, which allows you to to introduce into your Ionic U components all of the features of Vue three. So that that's that's very 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 cool, and it's much easier to use. So Vue beta is you know. Uh is I think getting close to RC. I think that's the news that I heard today that they're planning to release a uh, release candidate by the uh, end of July. And this is this month. So <laughs> how far along are you with the on view? Well, you, you can measure the, the current alpha version. Uh, Basically, I started working on it on day one of the release of the Vue 3 beta. So that's a couple of months now old, right? So in terms of development, it's um, it had it's feature complete. It has everything and a couple of extra features on top of it right now. Uh, I still call it alpha for the reasons um, I'm not really testing it that much so i'm mostly writing the code so when i have everything in it will finish alpha transition to beta then we do our round of testing with the uh, example app of the uh, viewport and it's it's going to be ready i reckon it's um, about a month away from a something close to an rc as well or the first release great <laughs> Well, that, that's pretty exciting. So you're pretty much following the um, the release cycle of Vue 3. Yeah, uh, I, I really love the, that we started working on Ionic Vue two years ago, right? And um, I missed that, um, that feeling of working on something new. It, well, obviously Ionic Vue just wasn't new enough after two years of development. It was just bug fixes and uh, keeping up to speed with dependencies. And now Vue 3 comes out and I'm back again. There's a two year older me trying to figure out how everything works. No documentation, no nothing, just looking up the Vue 3 source. And um, just as two years ago, um, I got up to speed and have had a working prototype really, really fast, but there are kinks to work out. So I, I really enjoy the fact that I was able to go back in time and relieve that experience. Yeah, you, you don't look any older, dude, just more experience. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's what they say. Yeah, but you know, what Michael is saying is that uh, two years ago, Michael started with Ionic View, uh, version mm -hmm. like one, but that's Vue 2 and Ionic 4 when Ionic just released its web component yeah. support, right? And now uh, the game has changed its, its a whole new kind of level because there is like two years worth of experience and and at Modus, you know, we've been working with a lot of clients on Vue and Ionic and Ionic Vue. <laughs> A lot of um, mm -hmm. actual enterprise applications that went out public, and uh, we've been able to collect all that know-how, experience, and all those little tricks, and put that into uh, the repository that we maintain for Ionic Vue. Yeah, um, so I wanted to give you a quick example. So the other day, about a week ago, I was driving and I received a notification on my phone, and I was at the red light. And I looked it up, it was an issue in Ionic View saying that for some reason you cannot configure Ionic, you cannot pass, pass any configs to it. I was like, well, that's weird. It's always worked for me. And I come back home and I realized that one of the latest versions kind of broke it of uh, versions of Ionic 5.1. So I push out a fix and uh, 
release a new version and the guy just responds with wow that was quick and that's that's a really cool uh, feeling of just being back and forth with the community on a really 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 snappy and being fast about it and uh, I love that just being able to talk to them and have feedback directly yeah that's phenomenal you know as someone who gets some of those notifications too I know that you respond to them almost immediately but um so hold on did you did you fix that while waiting for the red light to turn green or did you did you go I home? wish <laughs> I wish yeah <laughs> Oh, that would, that would have been awesome. There's probably a plugin for Vim for that, but um, I don't have it installed. <laughs> Vim phone? Vim Red Light. <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> cool sounding name. Vim Red Light. Uh, don't code and drive. Okay, so... Should so be a banner. Yeah, that could be a banner. A bumper sticker. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's great news, Michael. You know, I'm glad that um, you, you're getting uh somewhere with ionic view or view 3 and ionic 5 mm -hmm. and as i said we've been you know kind of testing the waters with the sample application ionic view is already public so anyone can uh can use it right the sample application is still not there but i think we're gonna release that fairly soon but ionic view is a library for version 3 the alpha is available and um the link is in the description is it okay that the community starts working with it yeah yeah absolutely in, in fact i would very highly appreciate it because um with front end applications there's so many use cases so many ways to integrate something and ways to break something so the more people try it out the more people integrate it into their own workflow the more information we get the more things we can fix and improve and get feedback on usage and uh, that sort of thing moving forward michael and i are going to continue this conversation about ionic and view right you know we've been talking about things like bootstrapping ionic view just to show how it's done right then um showing uh, tabs and how to arrange kind of the application skeleton and just those regular popular components like the tabs or yeah well uh, just just tell you a little bit about tabs in view 2 i just hated tabs because they were the most difficult component i've ever written for it and i, I still didn't think that i got it right so in view 3 i love tabs because they are way more easy to integrate it's just plug and play and i love it and we will probably backport that feature to the previous version um, one of the other things that we can talk about is uh, functional components and how you can integrate them with Ionic View and get that uh, stateless performance boost. Um, I just love that. Um, everything in Ionic View is a functional component and then you sprinkle some composition API, which I just fell in love with. Uh, it's just great. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Oh, dude, I want to see how composition API works with Ionic View. Uh, or uh, how composition API and view work with Ionic. That's the proper way to say it, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. There are some neat tricks, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. This is a great intro, and we'll continue the conversation by Ionic View. And give me this uh, virtual high five. There you go. Come on. Ah. No, two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. See you later. <laughs>